friends welcome back to channel neat biology expert i am dr parveen in this lecture series we are studying class 12 biology chapter 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants so in this particular lesson we are going to study the last lesson of this chapter that is parthenocarpy so what is parthenocarpy what are its different types and the significance of parthenocarpy this is what we are going to learn in this lesson right so when we see in the normal fruit development that means after fertilization through the sexual method of reproduction when a fruit is produced okay so generally the fruit part is produced from the ovary and the seed part is produced from the ovule that means after fertilization the ovary becomes the fruit and the ovule becomes the seed this is in the normal sexual method of reproduction whereas in the parthenocarpy the development of the fruit without the formation of the seed this is what happened exactly in the parthenocarpy fruit develops without the development of the seed okay so why there is no seed why only fruit is formed because there is lack of pollination or fertilization or embryo development could be one or more than one any of this reason okay so there won't be any pollination or there won't be any fertilization or even if the fertilization occurs the embryo development will not be completed so as a result only the fruit will be there it won't have any seeds so this condition is called as parthenocarpy so in a number of cases fruit like structures develop from the ovary without the act of fertilization so such fruits are called as parthenocarpic fruits so what is parthenocarpic fruits the fruits which is developed without fertilization of the ovules is called as parthenocarpic fruits so they don't have any seeds because the ovule is not developed or mature okay so what are the characteristics of this parthenocarpic fruits so the parthenocarpic fruit is devoid of embryo and endosperm it won't have embryo it won't have any endosperm and the fruit will not have seed so we call this parthenocarpic fruits as seedless fruits or virgin fruits they won't have any seeds so even if seeds are present in some plant varieties that proves they are not true seeds that means they are not viable seeds they are non viable seeds okay so from that seed the next progeny could not be uh, developed or produced so they are non viable seeds so, so that is a characteristic of parthenocarpic fruits so many commercially produced fruits they are seedless so for example orange now many varieties of the grapes banana papaya so many commercially available fruits nowadays they are all of parthenocarpic fruits okay so what causes this parthenocarpy why some fruits are not having uh, seeds because naturally it could be due to three reasons okay so in natural population the parthenocarpy results from one of these three causes that means either there there might not be any pollination occur okay naturally if the plant did not have any pollination it won't results in the seed formation or in some plants pollination occur but fertilization not occur okay that may be the second reason or in some plants both pollination and fertilization may be completed but the embryo after the embryo form the embryo may get aborted aborted so as a result the seed won't be developed okay so the reason for parthenocarpy could be due to either lack of pollination or lack of fertilization or the embryo may be aborted so one of this reasons okay so for example if you see this picture normally if a fruit is there when we see this yellow color part is the endosperm and the central region is the embryo okay this is normally present in a, a normal sexually produced fruits okay so some fruits which produce through parthenocarpy for example if you take cucumber okay cucumber when it is produced through parthenocarpy they may contain small small seeds but all those seed they are non viable seeds non viable seeds they won't be helpful for the uh, development of the progeny they won't have any uh, mature embryo okay so they contain seed like structure but they lack embryo or the endosperm these two structures this embryo and the endosperm they are absent in the non viable seeds okay so these are the reasons for the parthenocarpy so the term parthenocarpy was coined in 1902 by a person called nall he coined the term parthenocarpy in 1963 nits nits he classified parthenocarpy 
into three categories. So depending upon how it occurs, he classified Parthenocarpy into three categories. The first one is genetic Parthenocarpy, second one is environmental Parthenocarpy and third one is chemically induced Parthenocarpy. So in this genetic Parthenocarpy and environmental Parthenocarpy, this could be due to natural processes. This can even we say these are natural Parthenocarpy. Natural Parthenocarpy. Whereas the third one is artificial Parthenocarpy. That means we are inducing the Parthenocarpy voluntarily in the plants. So this is the chemically induced or artificial Parthenocarpy. So let us see what are all this one by one. The first one genetic Parthenocarpy. So the Parthenocarpy arises due to hybridization or mutation. So if a plant shows the Parthenocarpy characteristic, it could be due to hybridization, mutation. Okay, so it is a variety of natural Parthenocarpy. Example in citrus fruits, in cucumber varieties. So when we see naturally plants like banana, some varieties of pineapple, papaya, figs. So these uh, plant varieties, they show natural Parthenocarpy. So the best example is banana. So banana, when we see the banana, okay, so the male flowers are sterile. So they could not able to do pollination. So what happens as a result of no pollination, the female, the plant, once it matures, they start producing a hormone. That hormone is called oxin or indole acetic acid. Oxin, indole acetic acid. This is a plant growth hormone. This is produced in the female plant by the placental tissue. So this growth hormone induces the unfertilized ovary to convert into fruit. So directly without fertilization, the ovary is converted into fruit. Okay. So this is through hormone. This occurs naturally in banana. So why? Because banana, the male flowers are sterile. Okay. Clear. So this is an example for natural Parthenocarpy. So the fruits which are produced in the Parthenocarpy uh, process, they are all seedless and the size is also big. Okay. So the size is also big and the fruits are seedless. For example, if you see the banana, when you cut open and see banana, they may have small, small seeds. Okay, but they are sterile seeds. They are non-viable. They don't have any active embryo or the endosperm in those seeds. So we could not generate or the banana seeds could not able to propagate. So the only mode of propagation for banana is through vegetative propagation. Okay, so this is called genetic parthenocarpy. And the second one is environmental Parthenocarpy. So during some conditions like frost, fog, low temperature. That means when there is a low temperature or ice cold environment or a frost freezing temperature like this. Or when the temperature is high. During this extreme condition in some plants the Parthenocarpy is naturally induced. Okay. So this type of Parthenocarpy is called as environmental Parthenocarpy. The plant, they respond to the environment. So as a result of this extreme heat or extreme cold, this Parthenocarpy characteristics is induced in the plant. Okay. So for example, if you see pure, in the pure plants, the low temperature of 3 to 19 hours, when we keep the pure plant in a low temperature, 3 to 19 hours, the Parthenocarpy is induced. Okay. So in this picture, you could see the fig. Okay, these are the small, small seeds of the fig. Actually, this is a Parthenocarpic fig. These seeds are non-viable or they are non-active. Um, they are sterile seeds. Okay, so like this, environmental condition induces Parthenocarpy in the plants. And third variety is the chemically induced Parthenocarpy. So what is chemically induced Parthenocarpy? We know that naturally in the plants, they produce the growth hormones to induce Parthenocarpy as we saw in the banana. So now what we are doing, we are now producing the growth hormones in uh, high level. Okay. So for example, if you see for about 15 types of gibberellins or gibberellic acids are produced, we are producing it through recombinant DNA technology in a huge scale and we are using this in the crop production. So, these hormones are produced and they are sprayed or they are injected to induce artificial Parthenocarpy in the plants. So, nowadays if you see, if you go to the market and buy fruits, most of the varieties of the fruits which we get in the markets, they are seedless. Why? Because all those fruits were induced or produced through this chemically induced Parthenocarpy method. Okay. So how we are doing this, Parthenocarpy can be induced artificially by spraying the growth hormones like gibberellin 
or auxins. Indole acetic acid or cipralic acid. These are the hormones we use to induce parthenocarpy. Or sometimes what we do, we delay pollination. We won't allow the pollination to occur in the plant. So if pollination not occur, naturally the plant will adapt the uh, parthenocarpy. That also we do. Okay, that is a method of inducing parthenocarpy. So as a result of this, maturation of the ovaries without the process of the fertilization occurs. So here the plant, the fruits which are produced, they are larger in size and they are pulpy. The size of the fruit is also big and they have more flesh. They don't have seeds. Okay. Many varieties of apple, pears, squash, cucumber, tomato, grapes, many varieties of the fruits nowadays we get in the markets. They are produced through parthenocarpy. Right. So, these are the three types of parthenocarpy. Now, let us see what is the significance of parthenocarpy. We are getting seedless fruits, right? So, the seedless fruits have greater commercial importance with improved quality. The size of the fruit is also bigger and it has no seeds. The pulpy content is more, okay? So, it has improved quality. So, as a result of this, the seedless fruits, they are used in the preparation of jam, jellies, sauces, fruit drinks like this these companies they get all these fruits in a bulk quantity for their production okay and it reduces the cost of cultivation and we here in the seedless fruits the edible part is more there is no seed so the edible part is more so that is an advantage and also here we are using the growth hormones of the plants okay we are not using any other chemicals we are just using the natural growth hormones whatever produced in the plants so it is not harmful for the human to consume okay so the fruits produced are natural and they are also larger in size and another advantage of this parthenocarpic fruits are here in this parthenocarpic fruit production there is no pollination occurs so once pollination is there only their pollinators come so pollinators are the insects so, the insects may damage the fruit sometimes. So, as a result of that, we apply pesticides, chemicals we usually apply for the natural fruits. Okay. But in the parthenocarpic fruit, there are no pollinators. So, we won't apply any chemicals. So, those fruits are pesticides free. So, these are the advantages of the parthenocarpic fruits. Okay. Now, some students may have a confusion. Is the parthenocarpy and parthenogenesis the same? No. They are completely different. Okay, so let us see the difference between parthenocarpy and parthenogenesis. See, here you can say the first word parthenocarpy. Carpy means carpel. So carpel, what is carpel? Carpel is a part of the plant, right? So carpel means this is related to plant. Here, genesis, genesis means formation, formation of something. So generally this is related to animals. So, parthenocarpy is related to plants. Parthenogenesis is mostly related to animals. Okay. So, what is the definition for the word parthenocarpy? So, development of the fruit without fertilization is called parthenocarpy. Here, fruit is developing without fertilization. Okay. And what is parthenogenesis? Here, an organism is producing without fertilization. That means reproduction from an ovum without fertilization. Understand? Here, an organism is produced. In parthenogenesis, whereas in parthenocarpy, fruit is produced without fertilization. But what is common in both this term? Without fertilization, without fertilization. So, partheno means without fertilization. So, that is the common in between these two terminology. Okay. So, here in the parthenocarpy, unfertilized ovule is developed into seed. In parthenogenesis, unfertilized egg is developed into a new organism or some plant also adapt parthenogenesis so that time we can say unfertilized ovule is developed into a new plant understand okay clear and here all the fruits are seedless and here all the organisms which are produced through parthenogenesis are haploid in nature haploid they are mostly sterile they are sterile okay clear and parthenocarpy is applicable only to plants it will not occur in any other thing because it is a formation of fruits right so parthenocarpy terminology is related only to plants whereas parthenogenesis mostly occurs in animals sometimes it also occurs in the plants okay so this is the difference between parthenocarpy and parthenogenesis both are completely different but they occur without fertilization okay so i hope this lecture is clear for you and if you like this lesson, like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel Meet Biology Expert. Thank you.